Our fourth project this semester is Memory Extension. This project will explore methods of conceptual art and allow our concepts and ideas to drive the work forward. The outcome of your project will be a wearable physical body extension that can be static or kinetic, which means it has movement, and it can be made of the medium of your choice. So it's open to your discretion in terms of the media that you will use to create your wearable memory extension. Now, before I go deeper into the project, I do want to discuss the intersection of sculptural objects and the human figure. Wearable art can be dated back to the 1930s and it really developed in jewelry making. Modernist jewelry at the time refers to this as the wearable art movement that spanned roughly between the 1930s to 1960s. And during this time, we saw wearable art mostly emerging from jewelry makers. Some 20th century modern artists and architects sought to extend this uh, movement and really sought to elevate body ornamentation. And so what we might uh, have think of as traditional jewelry, earrings, necklaces, these artists and designers and architects wanted to elevate and push further into more of a conceptual realm. And so they really sought to elevate this ornamentation to a level of fine art that transcended and moved beyond decoration or craft, um, that moved beyond kind of conventional settings and standards for, uh, for jewelry or for setting um, precious metals or fine stones. And so it was really a form of expression and concept to extend and elevate these materials like metals and stones that were very, very much um, used in a traditional way prior to this. And so when we move up to the 1960s, the wearable art movement really shifted into exploring different fibers and exploring different ways of uh, creating art that can be worn by the whole body, just not uh, as an extension, um, uh, a jewelry extension or ornamentation and extension. And so in the 60s, we saw fiber and materials being incorporated into wearable art. And the uh, in the 60s, now this was called the art to wear movement, and it was really based and incorporated into knitting. And uh, at the time, this wearable and fiber art movement really reflected the counterculture of the time. And artists were creating wearable fiber art pieces with finished fabrics, um, so finished wools or yarns, uh, other materials, or just making them from a variety of different materials that would really create these unique individual pieces of work. Now, artists working in wearable mediums use a variety of media, such as craft and fine art skills that intersect these different genres of craft or fine art. Uh, artists who are working in the wearable realm may also want to explore color theory or chemistry, biology, sewing, clothing design, computer software, Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. Wearable arts, as we uh, will see, span a variety of techniques and technologies. Shown here are just two examples of artists that use paper in their work very differently. On the left, we see Italian sculptor and ecologist, who's also a performance artist, Ivano Vitali, who creates color-coded balls of yarn from the daily newspapers that they read, and then uses handmade knitting ne needles to weave these really extraordinary full-sized creations that are worn on the body. And then on the right, we see Jayan Shin, who creates these really structural pieces of body ornamentation that mimic wire in shape and form, but are really constructed out of paper. Now, not all garments that are created as wearable arts are made from traditional fibers or, fa or fabrics. And not all artworks are meant for ordinary or practical use. 
Uh, performance and conceptual artists have sometimes produced examples which are more provocative or exploratory, such as this work by Rebecca Horn called the Pencil Face Mask, in which the artist wore a mask with several pencils and created a performance in which, while using this mask, drew on the walls around it. An early example of a performative wearable art piece is the electric dress by the Japanese Gutai artist Atsuku Tanaka, created in 1956. This ceremonial wedding garment consists mostly of variously colored and painted light bulbs and meshed in a tangle of wires. And the artist wore this in performance with this garment plugged in so those light bulbs were um, activated. Now this isn't really wearable in, in a practical sense. It can't be worn every day. It's really specific. It's a conceptual piece that's intended to be worn for performance. Uh, and at the time it functioned as a really daring piece of performance work. We also see uh, the 1969 performance called TV Bra for Living Sculpture by Nam June Pike. And this was performed by um, Charlotte uh, Mormon, who played a cello while wearing a bra made of two small operating television, uh, two small television sets that were fully operational. Uh, this was also daring at the time, a live performance uh, that was uh, a multimedia in terms of playing music live and, and being um, uh, unclothed and wearing these um, television sets. We also have Jason Edward Tucker's Umbra as an example of a kind of uh, intersected performance and wearable art piece. Now, this is a piece that is made, it's an inflatable suit worn by the performer and the suit is made of spandex as well as varying sizes of weather balloons. And this suit is made to both contour the human form and exaggerate the body to an extreme degree. And these performances last varying levels of time from one hour to three hours. Another example of this conceptual wearable piece is by Canadian artist uh, Andrea van der Kooj who created a group of pieces called Garments for Forced Intimacy. These were done in 2006, so these are much more current. And these are hand-knitted articles of clothing that are designed to be worn by two people simultaneously. And they, as the name states, compel the wearers into uncharacteristic proximity. We also see, as we saw in the video, The Future of Clothing, that new and emerging technologies have shifted and even further elevated how artists approach their work. Ying Zhao is a cutting edge designer who makes garments that are reactive to light and eye movement. Ex these examples here are gaze activated dresses. They are embedded with eye tracking technology that responds to an observer's gaze by activating tiny motors to move parts of the dresses in mesmerizing patterns. It's really fantastical to watch. Iris Van Herpen is another cutting edge designer who is really a body architect. And, and uh, she's a Dutch designer who creates these multi-layered multi kinetic sculptures that are worn on the figure. And then of course we were introduced to the idea of eco couture or eco fashion. And this is Suzanne Lee who grows fabrics out of microbes and uses those fabrics to create garments. Now, wearable art can also intersect with body adornment or exaggeration. So we're kind of pulling back that uh, uh, wearable art movement from the 1930s, where it was really an extension of jewelry making. And we're now pulling this into more wearable art and expressive movement. And so several artists and designers consider themselves to be body architects because the human form is integral to their work and the human form almost acts 
as an armature or a foundation for the work that will be upon it. Now, Rebecca Horn, who is the artist that did the pencil face mask, is an artist who early on explored the concept of physical extension or body extension and body architecture in the 1970s. We also see contemporary artists who continue to explore the body and body architecture uh, and adornment as wearable, elevated ornamentation and acts of physical expression. So our project four for this semester is memory extension. And this is where you are to create a wearable art piece that becomes an extension of your physical body. This can be kinetic, like the image here. It can have movement or it can be static, which means it is still and it does not have any type of movable parts or, or no intended movement but it must attach and be worn on part of your body and extend as though it was an appendage or an extension of an appendage. And it must be worn without any assistance. And so this means it cannot be held in place. It cannot be leaned on. It cannot be suspended by a string in the ceiling. It must be able to be worn securely on the body wherever it is extending from. Now this piece, uh, this is where we are starting to integrate some of that conceptual art and that conceptual process, because this piece will be based off of and um, inspired by a memory. And I'll take you through an exercise on how to kind of conjure up a memory and start the process of visualizing and conceptualizing that memory. Now the material for this project is open to your choice. So you can use anything. You can use cardboard, you can use metal, you can use fiber, you can use any material, plaster, whatever you are interested in using to create this project, you are able to. So it's very, very open in terms of material. Now, I know some folks sometimes have uh, difficulty with conceptualizing ideas or memories. And so I have a five step process for kind of capturing your memory, walking through that experience and then starting to create a idea for an art piece from that. And so you can always come back to that, come back to this exercise to help you really capture and conceptualize what your piece would be. I won't go through it now. I will provide this in the assignment as well, but this is a really great exercise to do to really kind of sit in your body and to capture a memory or a feeling or a thought that you want to evoke into an extension. On the left here, we see a Loma La Fontana, who creates lots of these types of physical extensions. And this would be an example of a static piece, although it does have movement when the, the um, individual wearing it moves, the piece will move itself, but it doesn't have any moving parts. It doesn't have any kinetic components that are moved by the artist or triggered by the artist. Now your final piece must be photographed for submission in at least three ways. So one image showing the structure worn, so the wearable extension, the memory extension worn from the front, one image worn from the back, one image just showing the wearable extension. It could be hanging, it could be propped on something, it could be lying flat, but just the object on its own. And then you may also want to include a video of you or someone else wearing this extension if appropriate. Sometimes photos are just fine. Like for instance, this example here, we wouldn't need a video to kind of understand the concept of this. But if you have something that does have some movement or showing it in action would really help to solidify the concept, you might want to include a short video. So what are some questions to reflect on as you are thinking about your project? One is, what is your memory? What thought or feeling am I transforming into a body extension? And so doing that exercise that I'm providing will really help you get 
to what that memory is. And then you want to start to really think about what material would work best with your concept. How can you use your selected material to reinforce your concept? Is color important? It may or may not be. If it is, why is it important? Is, is it important that your extension be kinetic and movable, or is it static? Uh, for instance, this um, extension here by artist Tanya Duty uh, is not kinetic, but movement might be important to her concept. Is it important that others are able to identify your memory, or is it okay with you that your concept be visually ambiguous, that maybe we don't know what that memory is or what that feeling is, um, uh, and, and as an artist, you don't need the viewers to know that. Or would, do you really want it to be a message that you're communicating, a visual story that you're telling? And then these, we have a shorter time to do these than the other projects. We just have a couple of weeks to do these. these so really work on managing your time. Um, again, three different images showing different angles of your piece, a video if it's appropriate. And that's it. And I'll leave you with a quote by conceptual artist Saul LeWitt about conceptual art. Uh, and that is that the idea becomes the machine that makes the art. The idea is the driver. The concept is the driver. This is what develops the work. Email me if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing your memory extensions.